Hi, I'm Dr. Johnny Drain, food scientist, and today I'm going to be talking to Dr. Kumiko Ninomiya, Executive Fellow at the Umami Information Center. Hello, Kumiko. Yeah, very nice to meet you. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about your work a little bit more and uh, about umami and conceptions about umami, misconceptions, and also how umami can superpower plant-based diets. So the first question I have for you today is, can you share with me some common misunderstandings that people have about umami? Uh, now people would like to use natural and organic food ingredients. And when I gave the lecture to the students at the Culinary Institute, the, they told me, we are always trying to use organic and natural food so that there is no chemical substances in, in our food ingredients. And I showed them the, the molecular structure of glutamate. And they said, no, we don't have such kind of chemical substance in our foods. And when you told them that, or showed them that, that um, umami or glutamates are chemical compounds, did they think it was strange? They are trying to understand, but they don't know and they hate to understand the chemical substances. But I usually talk about what is uh, uh, water. Water is H2O. So hydrogen and oxygen makes water. In the same, same way, uh, any kind of taste compounds is made by uh, chemical substances like hydrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen. And uh, they gradually understand <laughs> We need to have lots of chemical substances, including not only the taste substances, but also vitamins or, or uh, coloring uh, substances. So this is very important uh, information to understand what, what is natural, what is organic. I showed slides of free amino acids and protein. So protein is a long chain of free amino acids. So which one? Free amino acids or protein, which one is found in foods? Almost all students said only protein. And the free amino acids is a component of a, a supplement. No, both free amino acids and protein are in foods. Tell me about this webinar that you gave recently about plant-based foods and umami. Uh, we organized uh, uh, plant-based foods for the monks in Japanese temple and umami. Uh, meals for monks is called the shojin ryori. Shojin means plant-based food uh, diet. And uh, shojin ryori has 800 years history in Japan. And uh, as you can see here, uh, the peels and the core or hard uh, leaves outside of the vegetables are also used for cooking. So this is very important policy for the plant-based foods in Japanese temple. And uh, uh, no strong flavor vegetables like uh, onion, garlic, uh, leek, or shallots are used for the cooking uh, because strong flavor hinder the uh, monks training. Only the synergistic effect of glutamate and guanidate is used in the uh, plant-based cooking in Japan. We usually have a protein from meat or fish, animal-based foods, but uh, they try to uh, take protein from soybeans. The so, uh, protein content in boiled soybean and the meat and the protein are the almost the same. Meat of the field, I love that. So I would say one of the common misunderstandings that I come across is the idea that, you know, meat equals umami. For the viewers, can you give us some examples of how, how people use soybeans in, in innovative ways in Japan? So for, for example, miso and soy sauce are fermented ingredients. So they, they are rich in glutamate, umami taste. And that other products like tofu or fried tofu, deep fried tofu, in Japanese historical plant-based foods, they don't want to have uh, meat-like products from soybeans. 
So soybeans are soybeans. So even though those monks are cooking only with vegetables and soybeans, you can still make use of the synergistic effects of the glutamates and the guanolates, you said. So fresh vegetables contain glutamate and the dried vegetables have guanolate. So we live in a world now where more and more people are adopting plant-based diets or, or maintaining more of their diet as, as being focused on, on eating vegetables and, and fungi, etc. What do you think that learning about umami can bring to or can enrich a plant-based diet for those people? In the shoujin cooking, how to bring out the original taste of uh, vegetables? No complex taste, very simple and uh, enjoyable taste. So uh, there is a six taste in shoujin cooking. Mm. Uh, six taste uh, are sweet, sour, salty, bitter, spiciness from chili pepper and wasabi, and tangmi, a very subtle and faint taste. And this is almost the same as the current umami taste based on the scientific research. And respect any kind of food ingredients is a very basic part of shoujin cooking. Do you think that knowing more about what umami is and the science behind umami, do you think knowing more about those things can help you be a better plant-based chef or cook? I'd like to uh, share more and more uh, information about how to make a best combination with the saltiness and umami. Because uh, how to reduce uh, sodium intake is uh, one of the big issues around the world because everyone would like to have healthy eating, healthy and uh, tasty eating. Umami needs less salt. Still delicious food, but less sodium and therefore better for our, better for our health. Yeah. So I have one final question for you and it's a tough one, but if you were to give one tip to home cooks or chefs who want to use umami to superpower their plant-based cooking, what would it be? Uh, try to make uh, uh, dried vegetables, sun-dried vegetables. If you have sun-dried mushroom, you can have strong umami power, super umami power, and a dried tomato and dried, any kind of dried vegetable. You can have both glutamate and guanylate in the vegetables, so you can have more power. Please try. Super umami power for everyone via vegetables. It's been great chatting to you again, Kumiko. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to the next chance we have to talk about umami and food science. <laughs> okay, thank you and bye-bye.